Hey there guys, so according to reports, coming up this May, Canelo Alvarez is going to be defending his title against former champion Danny Jacobs. Now let's talk about this one, because it's an interesting matchup. So, you guys that have been following my channel will know that for a long time I've always rated Danny Jacobs very highly. I think that he's one of the most naturally talented middleweights in the world. When Danny Jacobs was being considered to be a potential opponent for Triple G, while Triple G was ruling the roost at middleweight a couple of years ago, you guys that were following my channel at, my, at the time would know that I said from day one, I'm talking long before that fight got announced, I said that Danny Jacobs would be the biggest threat to Triple G in the division. And I also said that when the fight did get signed, I said that Danny Jacobs would be he would give Triple G his, tough, his toughest fight so far. And going into the fight when pretty much everybody who was sub to me at the time was saying that the fight was a mismatch. and that, Not everybody, but the majority of people were saying that it was a mismatch. Saying that Jacobs wouldn't last three rounds, that he had a glass chin, that he would get taken out early. I said from day one, no, he won't get taken out early. That's going to be a very competitive fight. And I gave him a very good chance of, at, at very least, giving Triple G his toughest fight yet. Although I did pick, I did ultimately pick Triple G to win, and that was what happened. But point is, I've always rated Danny Jacobs. The point is, I think that this guy's very talented. I think he's a lot more skilled than people give him credit for. Um, I think the whole narrative about him having a glass chin was an absolute myth. Said that from day one. Um, he was knocked out once by um, by Dmitry Pirog, and D Dmitry Pirog was a massively underrated fighter. He caught him with a really sharp really well timed straight right hand right on the button caught him right on the chin he didn't see it coming and that could that can happen to anybody anybody can get taken out like that in boxing okay it's just one of those things it happens so um yeah and and the the other knockdown against Sergio Mora in my opinion he, you know he he hurt Sergio Mora he dropped him and he had Sergio Mora going and i think Danny Jacobs steamed in and made a mistake and he got caught off balance so that was more to do with a, a balance issue and so it was more or less a flash knockdown so i think the whole narrative about danny jacobs having a glass chin was absolute bollocks if i'm being honest i think the guy has got a very good chin right i've seen him take some pretty good shots from from caleb truax for example and he, and he took those shots pretty well so i think that danny jacobs in addition to being a good boxer he also has a, a, a very underrated chin so going into this fight you look at him versus Canelo. Now, Canelo, I believe, is about 5'8", 5'9". Um, you know, he, he's a guy who is short, stocky, and he's a very good counterpuncher. You know, that's basically how Canelo fights. He, well, he's, a, he's an aggressive counterpuncher. He's a guy who holds the center of the ring usually, and he'll, he'll get you to open up, but he'll slip your punches, and he'll counter with some very crisp, very accurate hooks and uppercuts. You know, he, he seems to me like a you know what some of these people on here call a mid-range hooker so he's a he's i'd say the better technically of the two canelo but you would expect that if this was a fair fight and if this fight was officiated properly and if there was no nonsense in this fight you would give danny jacobs a really really good chance of winning this fight i know i certainly would i mean he's six foot one he's the taller guy he's got long arms he's got decent hand speed He's a very big puncher, got a high knockout percentage. Um, like I said, he's got a decent chin, and I don't think Canelo has, is as big a puncher as advertised. But here's the problem. Let, let's assume that Danny Jacobs goes into this fight, uses his height, outboxes Canelo, and just stays on the outside and tries to jab his way to a decision. Can you guys envision, in that scenario, can you envision Danny Jacobs doing that and actually getting the decision? Because I can't. I mean, getting the decision against Canelo, really? Is is there any way? <laughs> is there any way in 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 you know in the history of boxing could any strategy bring you to a points win against Canelo? You know, with the sort of corruption that we've seen in his career over the past couple of years, is is there anything you can do to beat Canelo on points? I mean, if, if Danny Jacobs wins every round, you know, just moves around and schools Canelo, you, will he get the decision? I really doubt it, is the point I'm trying to make. I, I, I just think that the judges would use that as an excuse to say, oh, well, you know, can, you know, 
Danny was just very negative. He wasn't engaging in the fight. He was running. So Canelo was the aggressor. So we give him those rounds. <laughs> but yeah, of course, when Triple G fought Canelo the first time and Triple G was the aggressor, he threw more punches. He landed more punches. He outworked and outboxed Canelo. Canelo was the one on the run. It was... Of course, the narrative was, oh, well, Canelo was the better boxer. You know, Canelo was the counter puncher. He was the he was the more crisp puncher. So, you know, we, we give him those rounds based on that. And <laughs> But then in the rematch, when Triple G was the boxer and he's the one moving and jabbing and outboxing Canelo, still landing more punches. But <laughs> Canelo is the one who is kind of coming forward and forcing the fight at times. Oh, well, Canelo was the aggressor, so we'll give Canelo the rounds because he's the aggressor, because he's coming forward. You you just, you can't win, is the point I'm trying to make. You can't win with Canelo, okay? If, if <laughs> the narrative changes to suit him every time, if you try and outbox him, you're running. But if you come towards him and you outwork him and and... and, and Try and just you know out out tough him in the ring. You're 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 just a caveman, and he's the classy boxer. And the point I'm trying to make is, Danny Jacobs cannot fight his usual style. He cannot use his attributes. Now, when Rocky Fielding fought Canelo, you you would expect a guy like Rocky Fielding, a guy who's six foot four, a guy who's got long arms, a guy who's the defending champion in that division, one sixty eight. You would have expected Rocky Fielding to use his attributes you'd have expected him to try and implement some sort of game plan where he's using his height and reach because he knew obviously he must have known going into the fight that he can't match Canelo for boxing skill he can't match Canelo for technique he can't match Canelo on the inside can't match Canelo for power can't match Canelo for speed athleticism any of those things he just can't match him okay it was different levels so you'd expect him to try and use what attributes he does have but instead Rocky Fielding made the decision to just stand in the pocket with Canelo and get, and, and get you know, lit up on the inside with body shots and whatnot. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I suspect that, that, that there are two possible outcomes. One is that, you know, two possible reasons. One is that Rocky Fielding is just, you know, a complete idiot. Or the other one is Rocky, Rocky Fielding knew that he wouldn't get a decision even trying to outbox Canelo. So his only chance was to try and slug it out with him and try and win, it, win an early knockout if he could. But obviously, he got knocked out himself. But, but the thing is, if that's what makes this fight so annoying to think about because I can totally envision Danny Jacobs outboxing Canelo. But I think Danny Jacobs is going to go into this fight and I think he's going to understand, he's going to know that if he's going to fight Canelo, there are things that he can't get away with. He can't get away with using his height and reach and boxing and trying to get a decision. It won't work. He won't get the decision. So I can see Danny Jacobs maybe not fighting his usual style. I can see him maybe standing in the pocket and trying to have a fight with Canelo. And that, of course, is going to give the shorter, more compact, more stocky Canelo opportunities to lands some shots on the inside, Canelo throws the shorter punches, he's got the better punching technique, um, he's got faster hands than Danny, you know, he certainly throws quicker combinations on the inside, he's very fast with his hooks and uppercuts, so that's going to give Canelo opportunities that he really shouldn't have against a guy as tall and as, as quick as, you, you know, from the outside, because Danny moves quite well, you know, he's... He, those are opportunities that Canelo's going to get in this fight that he really shouldn't get, if you know what I mean. So that's going to make this fight really frustrating, is you just know that no matter what Danny Jacobs does, no matter what strategy he intends to employ, it's not going to work out in the long run. You know, it's not going to work out should the fight go the distance. So Danny needs a knockout. I think he knows he needs a knockout. But Will he get the knockout on the outside, moving around? I doubt it. Canelo's got very good defense. Canelo has shown to have a very good chin in his career, so I can't really see that happening. If Danny does slug it out with Canelo and, and try to outmuscle him on the inside, that's not going to work out well for Danny. Like I said, Canelo's the shorter guy. Canelo's got the the you know the shorter reach, and he's he's very good on the inside with his hooks and uppercuts. So um, I mean. <sighs> If, if Triple G wasn't able to knock Canelo out by coming forward and by slugging it out with him, he was able to beat Canelo, don't get me wrong, he got the better of him, but got robbed, but wasn't able to force a stoppage, 
I can't see Danny Jacobs doing it. So, to me, I give Canelo the edge in this fight based on the fact that Canelo will get the decision no matter what happens in the fight. I mean, he could get his face split open. You know, you you could split his head open and, and beat the shit out of him for 12 rounds and, you know, make him look like Jeff Lacey did against, against fucking Calzaghe. You know, you could make him look like like the way Badu Jack looked in his last fight. You know, you could do that to Canelo and and he would still get the decision. So, <laughs> I mean, Danny, you, you can't you can't pick Danny on points here, man. I, at least I I would be shocked if he gets a decision against Canelo. I really would be. If it happens, great. I'd be I'd be happy to see that. But um, as as far as what's gone on in boxing recently, I don't think there's any way to get a decision against Canelo. I I just think that Canelo is just one of these guys. He's kind of like Mayweather in the sense that when when you fight him you know that your only chance is by knockout. Just like when you fight Andre Ward, you know, you, you're, your only chance is to knock the guy out. If you don't knock him out, you're not getting the win. So, um, And he's never been knocked out. In fact, I don't think he's ever been down as an amateur or a professional. So um, you have to assume Canelo has a pretty good chin. So if Triple G couldn't stop him, I can't see Danny Jacobs being the one to stop him. So... Um, yeah, it is what it is, guys. I think Canelo's going to win the fight. I'm, I'm going to go for either Canelo by a stoppage in the first half because Danny Jacobs tries to tries to slug it out with him and tries to make it a brawl knowing he can't get a decision. And Canelo does what does to him, kind of what he did to Rocky Fielding, but not so brutally, you know, not so quick. I, I can't see Danny Jacobs just capitulating the way that Rocky Fielding did, you know, going to his knees and smiling and saying, ah, you know, I'm so happy to be here. I'm, I'm just so starstruck to fight Canelo. It's amazing. I, I've, I've, <laughs> I can pay my mortgage after this fight. I'm so happy. I'm financially secure. You know, I can't see it being that sort of situation, but I can see it being a situation where Danny tries it on the inside, you know, tries his luck and just gets lit up by Canelo and, ends up getting stopped, but I could also see a scenario where it's a close fight and a competitive fight and where Danny, you know, gets the better of, of Canelo, but doesn't get the decision, um, or I, I could see Danny just, if he does decide to try and box and, and be tactful and, and, and just move away and use his height and reach, I could see him clearly beating Canelo, but not getting the decision again, so... Canelo on points or Canelo by stoppage early on. Um, that's how I see this fight, depending on the the approach to the fight that Danny Jacobs takes. That's how I see this one. And um, it's a shame that, that I have to be this, uh, you know, what's the word? Pessimistic, I guess. Or, I don't know, this, this cynical about predictions. But when it comes to somebody like Canelo, all the corruption he's had in his career, all the, all the, the lies and the, the cognitive dissidence and just, just the way that fans you know, make things up and pretend, you know, people pretend like they think that this guy won in fights when they know he didn't, um, and, and you see scorecards like 118-110 in a fight where he got completely out through and outlanded, go in his favour, and you know, you see all this controversy, like the drug testing controversy and whatnot, and Canelo to me just seems like a guy who is untouchable, he really is, he's untouchable at this stage, he's got that same thing going on that May that Floyd Mayweather has, where you just can't beat him. Politically, you just can't do it. doesn't matter what happens in the ring. He will be credited for, for anything that happens in the fight. You outbox him, you're running away, and he's the aggressor. You know, if, he, if he's the one coming forward and throwing shots and you're the one moving away boxing, like, like I said, you know, he will be the one getting credit, not you. And at the same time, if you're the one who's going to come forward and force the fight and out-throw and out-land him, he's going to be the classy boxer who's landing the, the more precise punches and shit. And he's the guy who's, you know, so technically brilliant and you're just a caveman with no skill. You know, that, that's that's the narrative that is going to be fed to us after the fight. And, and that's how the judges are going to justify their, their, their decision, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Canelo for the win because how can Canelo not win? I mean, what can you do to beat this guy? Yeah, it is what it is, man. But yeah, Canelo on points or potentially a stoppage if, if Jacobs decides to slug it out with him. So let me know what you guys think about this one anyway. It's an interesting fight nonetheless. So thanks for watching.